Hey all. So I'm going to be showing you how to make these wrist warmers. Each video will have one of the three patterns, but it actually makes two sizes. So this one here is the um, child small and medium. Um, this one is the extra small and small for teenagers and adults. And this one here is the medium and the large, which is usually for larger adults or men. So, as you can see here, this is made with the 3.5 and this is made with the 4mm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a slip knot. So, I always get the tail end here and the working yarn there. And then I just pick that up like that. And then I'm going to twist over so the tail end is over the top of the working yarn. And then grab the working yarn and pull it through that loop that my fingers created. And that's my slip knot. Um, there are other methods online you might find easy. I know that way it's not the easiest for everyone, but it's one that I feel more comfortable doing. So that's the one I do. Okay, let's bring you in a little. Okay, so I don't like doing a chain to start because my work always ends up tighter with the chain. So I do the chainless start. Um, foundation chainless start I don't I, I'm not a hundred percent sure of the name but you'll see what I mean but what it does is it creates the chain and the first row um, all in one go so you're doing two rows at the same time basically um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, chain two my mind went blank then. Those who have been around in a while know that happens a lot. <laughs> right, once you chain two, you're going to go back in to that first stitch, which was your slip knot stitch, really. Well, the one next to your slip knot stitch. Um, and you're going to yarn over, and then you're going to pull back through. But then, what you've got to do is you need to create the chain first, and then that second row, or the first actual row. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through just the first one and that's now created your chain and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops and that's created your second row of stitches. Okay, so we're going to do that all along. So what you're going to do now, instead of going that first one, you'll see that there's a little V here. This is your normal stitch, the little V just there. You can see it's got two legs. And what we're going to do is go into that, and we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to yarn over and pull through, and then create your chain. So yarn over and pull through the one, and then create the stitch. So yarn over and pull through the two. Now the stitch we're creating for that second row um, is called the single crochet in US terms and the double crochet in the UK terms. And it's the only time um, that a whole row will be single crochet. After that, we go into the pattern. So we're just going to keep doing this until we have 36 stitches. Um, that's something I didn't mention. If you want to make them bigger or smaller, you want to do it in sets of six. So six extra stitches for each one you do. Now obviously if you're going to create the chain and then do a row of single crochet or UK double crochet, you'd need that extra one for the turning. But you're going to turn these, you're going to join these up together in the round so that we work the whole thing in the round. Um, but if you don't like doing this method of beginning you can do it with just a chain and then join that and do a row of single crochet or UK double crochet um, and then you'll get to the same place I will be after I've done my 36 here okay I just prefer this because it gets a less tight finish because even after all my years of crocheting I still can't get my chain to not be too tight but, nope. Okay, so don't forget we're going to go into that new chain that we always created. Picking up both legs, yarning over and pulling through. Yarn over and pull through once for the chain. Yarn over and pull through the two for the stitch. Okay, so just do that until you have 36 stitches. And I will meet you back here 
when I have my 36 and show you how we join it in the round, okay? Okay, so we've got our 36 starting row. So now we need to join it around. So if you just spread it out, so you can make sure that it's all straight and not twisting around anywhere. And then just fold it in half. And that way you know you're not twisting it when you go through. Now, when we're working, we're creating this bottom chain and then the second row. What we need to do is make sure that we're putting that second row as the row we're going to be working in. So you're going to twist it. Make sure you leave this working yarn above. So for me, I need to just turn that round so that it's that way round. So it's still folded in half, but now I've made sure I've got the stitches we want to work with at the top. So this is the top, this is the bottom. We want the stitches we're going to be working with, which was the single crochet, UK double crochet stitches at the top there. And then all we're going to do is go into that first stitch and slip stitch. That just joins it all in, into the round. If you can get your hook around it. There we go. And that just makes sure there's no twist in your work, it's all straight. Okay? You may have a better method than that, but I find folding in half and making sure it's straight that way works better for me. Okay, so in that stitch we've just slipped stitch into, all we're going to do is chain three and just. So we chain three, and now what we need to do is create our first shell. So we are creating these shells along here, well, on the bottom row, so here. And this row is our setup row for the pattern, so it's slightly different than the remainder of the rows that we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make into that same stitch where we've done the chain three and we slip stitch into, we're going to do four double crochets, that's UK treble crochets. So we're just going to yarn over, go into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. That's your normal double crochet US and treble crochet UK. And we're going to do four of them, and what that's going to do with the chain three we already have, it's going to total five, because the chain three counts as our first double crochet. There we just... So there we go, I have my five. So with the chain three, you now have shell of five. And um, five shell pattern is the main thing we will be working this in. But to shape around the wrist, we actually go to a three shell pattern. But I'll show you that when we get there for now. Just worry about the five shell pattern. That's what we're setting up. Okay, so the next thing to do after doing the five double crochets, or the four double crochets and the chain three in this first instant, is we're going to skip two stitches, and into that third stitch we're going to do a single crochet. So that's go through the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and go through the two loops. UK, that is a double crochet for UK, okay? So for US we're doing double crochets and single crochets, and for UK terms we're doing treble crochet and double crochet. Okay, so now we're going to create the next shell, so we're going to do five double crochets, but we're going to skip two stitches again and go into the third one. And now we're just going to do five double crochets into that stitch. And we're just going to repeat this around where we do a shell, skip two, do a single crochet, skip two and do a shell. We're just going to do that all the way around. Hopefully you'll have yarn that feeds better than mine because it's running away everywhere at the moment. <laughs> so I've done my shower, I'm going to skip two and I'm going to single crochet, that's UK double crochet, into the next stitch. And then skip two and do five double crochets or five treble crochets for the UK. Sorry if you're Working along with me and saying me saying numbers is putting you off. You could mute me for the end of the row if you like. Right. 
this is all we're going to do around the sew well. Keep skipping two. Don't forget to skip the two stitches because we need to skip them to have it spread out evenly. Because of the length of the shells, because of the length of the stitch, it's not decreasing in size, it's keeping the size that we want. Now if you've done this right, you will finish on a single crochet, UK double crochet, and a skip two. Make sure it's all turned the right way around. And now we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Then just slip stitch in and just pull that out and let's show you. So, that's what we have so far. If you just fold it in half there, you can see we have three shells this side and three shells that side. We have a total of six shells for this particular size. Depending what size you're doing depends on how many shells you have. But for this one, we have six to start with, okay? Okay, the next row is the same basic row we will be using for most of the um, wrist warmer. We're going to be doing the five double crochets, so that's UK treble crochets, and then the single crochet which is a UK double crochet. So I'll just show you where they're all going to go. So, this bit's important. I always start in the single crochet that we finished off in. So just take your hook back into that single crochet and slip stitch so that your hook is now sitting nicely in the middle of that single crochet and it says you happen to slip stitch across to the single crochet in front if you always go to the one just slightly behind you I mean it may be that you can slip stitch and still land in that single crochet I can't so I have to move myself backwards into it slightly but it doesn't affect the work and you can't see that we've gone backwards slightly once we carry on because we're doing shells in this row so it will hide the little bump so like we did before we're going to chain up three and we're going to do four double crochets that's four treble crochets UK into that same single crochet remember the chain three counts as your fifth double crochet for this beginning shell So I've done my five and now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to that shell next to it, the one in the previous row we just done and you're going to look for the third um, double crochet, that's the treble crochet for the UK so you have two blanks here, four and five, you need to skip. You don't want to go into those two, make sure you've got four and five stitch left and you want to go into that third one and you're just going to do your single crochet or UK double crochet into that so you go through the stitch yarn over, come back through, yarn over and go through both the loops and so now we've single crocheted into the top of the previous rows shell and we're going to do that each time, it's always into the middle of the shell and we're always going to work our shells into the previous rows single crochet and that way they end up nesting in between each other and it gives it that very pretty look so you probably guessed it by now. The next thing I'm going to do is do five double crochets, so that's five treble crochets UK, into that single crochet from the previous round. And this is the pattern we're going to repeat over and over again until we've got to the row count that we want. In this size, the row count we want to get up to is six. So I have to check my notes beside me to give the correct row counts because I'm filming several of these videos so I've got to make sure I give the right one. So for this size we want six shells. 
those and I'll show you how to count them in a second. We're just going to keep going around doing our five double crochets or five treble crochet shells into the single crochet and then the single crochet or UK double crochet into the top of the third double crochet shell from the previous round. As you can see it's reasonably easy to adjust the size you need for these um, so that you can make them work to the size you need if you need smaller or bigger. You just need to make sure that you have the stitches to count so that you can do one set of shells and one single crochet as well as your skip twos so that's why you use six. I'm hoping the sizes that I've come up with will be enough to fit most of you. I haven't worked out the gauge just yet but I will hopefully have the gauge wrote down on the actual pattern and in the description of the videos for you. And how much yarn you need for each one. So we're almost at the end of this round and then I can show you what that looks like and then you'll be able to do the rest of the rows when I do mine off camera you can do yours and you can meet me back to do the next set of shaping rounds. So you should finish with a single crochet, UK double crochet in the top of your previous row shell and then you're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three again. There we go, so this is what we have so far. As you see we still have six shells. Now what you can see, if I pull this one up, hopefully you can see, is you can see the shells and the way you can count the rows is they actually go in a diagonal either way. But so well, down here we can see this is the first row, this set of rows. So that's one row and then that's two, three, four, five and six. So we want a total of six which will actually be three shell rows there and three shell rows there like beside each other but I find it easier to count on the diagonal and then we're going to go into the shaping of the wrists. So I will meet you back here after we've done six total rows so that's the setup row and five full pattern rows okay. Okay so we've now got our six total rows so this is our bottom shell here so it's one two three four five and six. Okay, so three there and three there. So now what we're going to do is do our wrist shaping here and here. And that's as simple as changing from five double crochets to three double crochets or treble crochets UK. Everything else is staying the same. So we're going to do um, four rows of three double crochets. So we'll have ten rows when we finish. Rows seven to ten are the shaping for the um, wrist. So again, we're going to make sure we start in that single crochet or UK double crochet that we finished in. And then we're going to chain three. And this time we're just going to do two double crochets or UK treble crochets into that stitch. Remember the chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we've got three in there now. And now we're just going to carry on like we did before. So we're going to do a single crochet UK double crochet into the top of the third um, shell of, try that again, brain, <laughs> into the top of the third stitch of the five stitch shell. Okay, and then obviously we're going to move on to that single crochet and we're going to do three double crochets, that's UK treble crochets, into there. So it's basically doing the same thing as we've just been doing, but we're just doing less stitches. And that's what brings it in and calls it in for you. So 
So we're just going to do this for four rows. This is a good way to create shaping without having to actually decrease, decrease and do two together or four together or whatever to create the shaping. This way around there's no major decreasing needed. So it's a really good way to shape products when you're doing the shell stitch is just increase or decrease the amount of stitches you do in your shell will naturally create the shaping for you. Once I've done this round I can show you how it's already starting to shape. So remember we're doing three double crochets, so that's three treble crochets UK and then we're still doing our normal double single crochet or double crochet UK into the top of the previous shell. Okay, so on the last one we finish as usual in the top of the previous shell with our single crochet, UK double crochet. So we're just going to slip stitch into the top of our chain three. And then make sure you put yourself back into that previous single crochet so that that's where you start. So let me just put this down a minute. So can you see it's, like it's already started to come in just slightly there and that's all the shaping is, it's just doing the three double crochets that brings it in. This looks wider because of the thumb and I will show you how to do the thumb when we get there but this side just gives a nice gentle curve just to sh gently shape around your wrist. So the next round is pretty much the same but obviously we're going to go one, two, three. A minute. We're going to go into the second stitch on those shells instead of the third because obviously we only have three. So it's basically the middle shell stitch every time when we do these. So obviously we're going to start with the chain three and the two double crochets, UK treble crochets, into that single crochet, UK double crochet, and then we're going to do our single crochet or UK double crochet into that second stitch so otherwise the process is exactly the same we continue working in the single crochets and the centre stitch of the shell so as I said we're going to do four rounds we're going to have a total of ten rounds done when we've finished this section of shaping so I will get on with this and I will meet you back when we have our 10 rounds, okay? Okay, so this is our 10 rows total. So we've got the four rows of the three um, shell stitch, which has really brought that in quite nicely. And then obviously you had your previous six rows. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the five stitch shell to bring it back out but we're also going to start on the thumb shaping as well so one of the stitches the first one we do is actually going to have an increase shell on it and that's going to have seven so let's do that first so remember be set up in that single crochet and do your usual chain three and this time we're going to do six double crochets, so that's six UK treble crochets, into this stitch. And this helps create the space for increasing for the thumb. So there's our seven, so the uh, chain three is our first one, and then six more double crochets, UK treble crochets in that one stitch. And that's going to help us put extra on here, so we're going to have um, 
two single crochets and a shell stitch on this particular stitch to help with the shaping of the thumb. The rest of the pattern and um, the rest of the round is just the normal five shell stitch pattern. So I'm gonna do our single crochet, UK double crochet into the top of that second stitch, the middle of the um, three shell, remember? And then we're just gonna do five double crochets in the single crochets around, remember? If you wanted to adjust this to have a longer part up your arm you could do more rows of the five stitch shell before you go into the wrist shaping um, so once you've got this pattern down you should be able to adjust it to the size that you like and the length that you like I am happy to answer any questions you may have though so just pop them down in the comments and if you want to show me any that you've made then please do pop along to my Facebook group Sonia Jones Crafts um, I have a group and a page so the group you can share all of your work on if you like and any channels that you might have crafty channels or any businesses you're happy to sh I'm happy for you to share any of them in the group as well the group is linked in my about me section on YouTube so you should be able to find it reasonably easy I'm also Sonia Jones Crafts on Instagram if you'd like to find me on there. I'm on TikTok as Sonia Jones Crafts as well, but I'm not very active on there. I must do better. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to slip stitch into the top of chain three again to finish and put ourselves back into that single crochet. Okay, so we're going to do our normal five shell stitch into this single crochet. So we'll just do that. So that's chain three and then do four double crochets or UK treble crochets. And then I'll see this is the seven increase shell that we did so this is a little different on here what we're going to do is we're going to do our single crochet or UK double crochet into the second stitch and then we're going to do our shell into the fourth stitch and another single crochet into the sixth stitch okay so I'm just going to do a single crochet into that second stitch then we skip one and we do three double crochets. We're doing a three scale stitch in here. So just do three double crochets into the um, fourth stitch of the previous round. And then we're going to skip one again and into the sixth stitch we're going to do that single crochet or double crochet UK. So as you can see we have in that one shell we have a single crochet, a three shell and another single crochet and that again is helping create the increase we need for the thumb because it just fits up around that bit. And now we're back to doing the same five shell stitch all the way around. So just back to the basic repeat pattern again. Don't forget that YouTube does have a speed feature to control the speed of this video. You can either slow it down or speed it up if you need to. 
I can't meet everyone's requirements for speed so please do use the YouTube speed changer for the videos in order to watch at a pace you like instead of just commenting that it's too fast use the slow down speed that's what it's there for I try to go at a pace that's going to be suitable for most people but some like it faster and some like it slower and I just I can't do a video faster and a video slower it takes way too long to do videos at every pace that people like so use the tools available to you to make it more suitable to your pace Okay, so now we finished the round as usual, we've slip stitched into the top three, top of the chain three, and we've gone back into that single crochet to work our round. Now you'll notice as with the nature of crochet, even doing full rounds and not spiraling, it still spirals and moves back. So what you need to do is make sure you can recognise where your increase is for your thumbs so that you know where to skip when you're doing your round. So you can see here that that's your increase 7 and directly in the middle of that is a 3 shell in a row full of 5 shells so that should help you find where you're going to want to skip at some point so you're just going to keep working that up so as you can see here you'll have your 7 shell I don't know if I can lay it flat for you a minute so there's your 7 shell and there's your 3 shell in the middle of that seven shell before the rest of the pattern goes on and that's where we've skipped can you see that so that's how you're going to be able to read it. it's kind of the odd shell out in this pack this particular row okay so we're now just going to go back to doing more rounds of the five shell so for this one obviously it's still ever so slightly different because we've got the three shell to go into in there instead of the five shell but otherwise it's the same five shell pattern so chain three and do four double crochets in your first one my yarn is running all over the place and obviously you're going to do a single crochet into the top of the shell and then this remember you've got your single crochet on that seven before your chain three so make sure you go into that single crochet there and do your five And then obviously you're going to go into the second stitch of that chain three and do your single crochet or UK double crochet. And then make sure you find that remaining single crochet that's on that shell of seven to do your next five shell on. Just make sure that you don't skip anything then and get the stitch count to the correct we need for the thumb increase. Because they can get a little hidden being spread um, tightly packed in at that point then back to working the normal five stitch pattern That's the end of this round. So slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Then realign yourself back into that single crochet. Okay, so now if I just pull that out a minute, you can see the shaping of the thumb coming out there. Look. 
So that side's just a gentle one, but this one's really starting to come out past. And that's the last increases for the thumb we're going to do. Now we're just going to do that. So we've done here. And this bit is just actually the same normal increase pattern, but because we've got the extra stitches in, it's still going to continue angling out for you. So by now, um, we've done 13 rows. So what we're going to do, we're going to do rows 14 to 18, so 5 rows of the normal 5 shell pattern now. So we're just going to get straight on and do that. So this is the normal five shell pattern that we've been doing, so you probably don't need to see me do all that, so I'll do that off camera, but just remember we want to do up to 18 rows total, so another five rows, okay? So I'll see you back when we've done that. Okay guys, so now we have a total of 18 rows, we've just finished doing the five straight rows of the five double, um, the five shell stitch. Um, as you see the thumb shaping is coming along nicely there but it's now time to skip and create that thumb hole so we're going to be skipping here and working for the bit that goes around your hand here now obviously you need to know where your thumb um, is so remember look for that seven with the three and you want to fold that down and you can see here we have two shells and a single crochet and that's what we're going to skip is the two shells and the single crochet so when we get round to that point I will show you what we do so we're going to continue doing the normal five shell pattern at this point so make sure you're into that single crochet that we worked last and do your normal chain three and four double crochets or treble crochets UK Just keep going round. As you can probably see, once you've made a few of these, it becomes quite simple to see where things are. But don't panic if you can't see straight away, you will get the hang of it, I promise. Just a matter of learning to read your stitches, and that takes practice. So, don't worry if you're still struggling, just bear with it, have the confidence that you will get it done. And if you're really stuck, pop a question down below in the um, comment section, and I will try to answer it for you. There, so a couple more. We just want to slip stitch into not slip stitch, single crochet or UK double crochet into that shell. Okay, so we're going to work in this last single crochet here, our five shell. And I'll tell you how many shells we've done in just a second so you know where you're stopping if you can't quite read your stitches yet. Okay, so we've done one, two, three, four. We've done five shells on this round, and that's where we're going to start skipping. Okay, so we're going to skip this shell here, and this single crochet here, and this shell here. And we're actually going to work into that single crochet there. So we're going to do a shell with first chain one, and then skip over those ones and do your normal five shell pattern into this single crochet which is the last shell pattern of the row because we've only got a single crochet or UK double crochet to go into the top of the previous shell and then we're finished on the tray. Just 
try not to do too many double crochets like I just did then. <laughs> so we're going to single crochet or UK double crochet on top of that and then slip stitch into the top of the chain three. And again, make sure you set yourself into that single crochet. I'll just pull that out so you can have a look. So we are back to having six shells again, as you can see. And this is where we've skipped for your thumb. So if I can just pop it on, you can see how it sits across there. And that's where your thumb sits. Okay. So nice and simple to do. So we're just going to work the last three rounds along there and then we're done. You can do more rounds on this point if you like. I do three just because I think three looks nice enough and fits where I like them to fit. But if you want to do more to cover more of your fingers, just follow the pattern until you get to the length that you want. So pretty simple to adjust. So we're going to do the normal five shell pattern around for three rows. Okay. But this first row obviously will be slightly different because we have to work over that skipped chain one that we did. So you just do your normal five around until we get to that chain one space. And then I'll show you what to do when we get there. You guys can't see, but I'm actually currently playing yarn chicken. And um, for those who don't know what yarn chicken means, I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn before I get to the end. <laughs> I should have weighed it before I started, but well, I'm never that organised, as most of you probably know by now. <laughs> Okay, so just got to that chain one that we did when we skipped over for the thumb. And all we're going to do is do a shell into over that um, chain one, so into that space. Because obviously the last one we did was a single crochet, UK double crochet into a shell. So we're going to keep with pattern and just do five double crochets around that stitch. So we're going into the space rather than into the stitch. I'm just going to single crochet or UK double into top of that shell and slip stitch into the top of the chain three like usual. I'll just show you. So we have the extra shell in the thumb gap there and that just brings us up like that. Okay so at that point this is how sitting with two shells matching and two shells folded okay so the next round and the round after that so the remaining two rounds will be just the normal five shell pattern around so I will do them and I will meet you back here hey guys so I'm literally about to lose at yarn chicken I still have one round to go and this is all the yarn I got so I thought this might be a good time just to show you how I join in a new ball of yarn. So pop your ends opposite like this and then you're going to tie this end around that end so just pick up take it so it's looped around so it's only looped around there look and then you're tying it around itself so just tying your knot around like that and then we're going to do the same with this one so we're going to take this one I'm going to take it over 
and around and then we're just going to tie it around itself so this is loose and then you can pull them tight and you really want to make sure that you've gave that really good tight pull at which point you can then either leave the ends in on and weave them in or if you're sure it won't come undone you could snip these off now for less slidey yarns I'd snip these off but this is quite a slidey yarn for me even though it's got sequins and it does stop it sliding too far it can often come undone I found so I'm going to leave the ends on and I'm just going to work them in so what we're going to do this is the last round I'll show you what I do to make sure those ends get worked in ideally you'd want a couple of rounds less so that you can work them up and down a row as you go but I can't do that so but this pair is actually for me so it's not the end of the world if it's not 100% secure I need a new pair for myself so I wanted these ones for me so we're just going around so as you can see we've got to that section and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work that into the stitch so that they're both secure so use that as one thread so wrapping around and pulling through it's a little fiddly because it's thicker you want to make sure those two things stay quite tight and around and once you work that I just then work over them so I do my normal stitch and I've trapped them underneath and around and again I'm going to work them into it so yarn over go through it's a little fiddly but it's just a good way to make sure that they're all in and then make sure your ends are out if they're that one we can trim later but this one's a bit longer so we'll just work that one around and trap it down again so one, two, three, five then shift that out of the way it's now secured in place so you can worry about trimming them off when we finish so we're just going to finish that last row so I will finish this last row and come back to you ok so I've done that last row so I'm just going to finish off so I've slipped stitch into the top of that chain 3 and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through my loop and leave it there for a minute cut your tail end um, cut your yarn leave a good amount to weave in if you're using sequin yarn, I usually find it's better to remove that sequin as well because it gets a bit of a pain to go through. So once that's woven in, no one will see that. So we're going to pull that through and just give it a nice good tug to make sure it's secure. And then we're going to weave in the end. So I use this nice squishy eyed needle, I prefer that. But you can use any yarn needle you like really. Okay, you're going to want to work on the inside so that your ends are hidden and you're just going to work up and down and through the stitches you want to go through the yarn as well because that keeps it even more secure you want to travel in different directions so go one way for a little while and then switch and go a different way so that that way as the item gets moved around the stitch doesn't tend to get pulled out because it's already going in multiple directions make sure you're not bunching any of it but you just want to make sure you work around in three and then snip your end and that's your end in now obviously we've got these so we're just going to snip these little ends from when we tied in our yarn a minute ago these are nice and secure because I've put them into the stitch if you haven't put them into the stitch you'll want to weave them around just to make sure they stay in but as they're part of the stitch they don't tend to come undone now obviously we've got this end to weave in so just remember when we did the foundation that the chainless start we've joined that top row but we need to join this bottom row so we're just going to 
weaving next to it, tie a little knot to secure them in so that way you get a nice neat edge going around. It obviously has a little waviness because of the stitch but otherwise it's basically straight. So I'll just do the same as I did before, work up and down and weave in your end. Remember to try to go through the yarn as well so don't worry about splitting the yarn, it's better for you. Ooh, I forgot to take off the sequin, as you can see it gets a little stuck if there's a sequin. Um, especially if you're going through yarn so be sensible and remember to cut it off if you're using sequin yarn there we go slip that off and there we have your finished wrist warmer so obviously I still need to weave in that end but there's your pair of wrist warmers, so pop these ones on because these ones are mine, so I can show you what they look like on. And there's still enough room to go over your watch because there's give in the stitches. But there we go, so it just fits nicely around without bagging this, but it still has room for your watch. And I have a Fitbit, so it's quite a chunky watch. If you're wearing a smaller, delicate watch, it won't be so bad. But there we go, so this is your, um, what size are these ones? The, this is the small, and these ones are the extra small, which are just slightly tighter than these ones. Um, and these ones are good for most ladies' hands, but bear in mind, I am five foot nothing, so I am quite short. <laughs> so you might want to go with the bigger size that I will show in the next video. Okay, but I hope that all helps and you enjoy making these and I'll see you all soon. Take care.